Uh, yeah. What's his name? Potibu. Uh, Potibu. Potibu. Uh, so, his real name is, um, let me tell you his real name. Uh, Hakim. Habib. Okikiola. Oh, Okikiola. Good. Geez. But the ID um, uh, uh, of, of uh, police, Akali Baba Usman, has directed the commissioner of police in Lagos State to quickly pitch him out. And, you know, because <laughs> he doesn't know how, how serious those so what, did, what did the guy say? I was seeing well, he, the video. He's come back to say, I don't mean it to... I mean one million <laughs> followers on, on TikTok or one of oh these apps. God. But me, I'm worried. You know, I'm worried that that might just be with the substance of truth. And I hope that the investigation... They don't without fire. Properly. Well, he's too small to create cold groups now. Who is don't, he? Uh, he's... Uh, <laughs> huh. God group has been there for how many years? If he says he did, he said, let, he said let us was, find out. During, during COVID, there was the one million ah. uh, boys. Yes, did you that was, so we're doing uh, all sorts of things. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So that is where that's why the police are interested in him. So we saw the news um, on the, in, running in the social media that um, Nigerians are condemning the installation of a wanted terrorist, Ado Aleru. Okay, so his name is a wanted terrorist, Ado Aleru. Alieru Asarkin Fulani, and um, this was um, Endoton Dajing Emirates in Troubled Zamfara State. Critics, obviously, <laughs> as they've condemned, condemned this, um, this installation uh, of, this, of, this, of this man. And um, it has raised questions because, you know, the government keeps telling us they're fighting insecurity with everything they've got. And there we have in Zamfara State a bandit. Now, I have a few questions. I know that the governor has responded. I think um, you have the response of the governor. Yes, what so, did he say? Yes, earlier I read earlier today. So the governor has um, suspended. Um, the governor has suspended the emir, and um, he has put together a committee to investigate how this could have happened. But even when we read about the turbaning when it happened last um, on Saturday, um, the people of the community that were questioned and they were speaking, of course, anonymously. They said that well. For one, this will make sure that they are not attacked. This was a way of making sure that they will maintain peace. They said he, in particular, um, Ado Aliru, had promised not to attack that community for a while, and he had kept his word. So for them, this is like a sure thing that will en ensure that they are not attacked. And it just goes to show that government is not reaching every part of Nigeria that people, the people in the community, would rather trust in the bandits to protect them or not attack them than trust in the structure of our government to protect them. My own problem with this issue is they were, it was a ceremony, one. The local government chairman, I've forgotten his name, was at the event. Yeah, yeah. The local government chairman made a speech hey. at mm -hmm. the event. There were police officers at the event because you can't have that kind of without one or two police yes. officers working at the event. The terrorists did not come with any gun. Mm. They were so sure of their I, I safety. The video. They came with motorbikes. Mm -hmm. The terrorists, hundred of them. Yeah. They came with their motorbikes. They rode into town, into the community, mm. and watched the turban. Mm -hmm. And you see. When people keep saying government officials know about this kind of thing, local government chairman is look is a, is a, part, and parcel. Is, is part and parcel of government. You cannot tell me Emma was put there by government. Mikey, what is government that turbans the Emma? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mikey, what's even more disturbing to me is that the governor, all they did to suspend, this is more than suspension. This is rounding of a whole community. Saying, ah, Ngo, you are bandits. You know that kind of. Wait. I mean, I thought I, I thought he would be shocked to find out that this community is full of bandits. I think the governor was just trying shocked. to play to the gallery. Exactly. And that's how I felt because this community says that they said this appointment is with the demand for peace and reconciliation efforts highly needed for our people in our Emirates. And this Emir that crowned this uh, the man, Serikin Fulani, is the first. Emir himself says the new Fulani. Um, sorry, there's a place where he wrote it. He said the bandit leader named was named was turbaned on Saturday by yeah. Aliyu Garba Marafa, the first Emir of Yandoto. That means that community itself just gained its own first traditional and first community recognition from government. And the, if you leave a community to themselves, my fear when I read the story yesterday online was, did they do it under duress? Of course they did. We know. 
that communities have continually, even in Benue State, that they have to pay two double taxes. They pay government own, and then they pay bandits own. Uh -huh. mm. And these bandits work freely during daytime to go and collect it. Failure to pay is failure to protect. They will send out these notices. So this intelligence, it's the intelligence, the fact that the bandits can come in and collect. And government will say, we've not gotten a tip off. We have not, we have not ready to know. We are, we, uh, the DSS have not found out. The people have not informed the us. People have not, all the big, big grammar we used to hear. Is that, that for me, is the intelligence in that, I, what is that intelligence exposes? The willingness of government to do. You know, why, why can't say that they yeah. came in in motorbikes without guns? Because they know nothing will happen. They say the devil you know is better than the angel you don't that know. So you. this is the devil that we know. And if we give the, pay them taxes, if we turban them as emirs, at least our lives and our children and our wives' lives will be kept safe. That's the, what has happened. The guy is responsible for killing their families. Oh, yes. Their family members. He has yes, widowed yes. a lot of women, women He's wow. powerful. that community. Mm -hmm. They are still... Did you see them also? Did you see the I video? I didn't see the video. I saw the video. <laughs> you, it's fear. They now. were all Government there. Fear. These people rode in. The ML was there to abandon the man. From fear. They never born a man, not to abandon. Mm -hmm. You will roll yeah. the team. They will be... He roll him. Only I language. He roll him. He to ban him. So when you and suspend the MEA, why don't you... It was frightening to watch. Mm -hmm. It was because if it has come to that, federal government, they should even stop saying... When they start saying... It's, it, uh, because I heard one saying on Sunday that uh, uh, the country is much safer now than it was... Eight years ago. Oh, when tell that to over. the people in, living in town for Sambara. Tell that yes. to people who are on the train. The, train. Hmm. the sad thing is that we, we are looking at still... Zamfara. We are not looking across the country. When you go to uh, the east and you have a seat at home and there's a government mm -hmm. who did not have no a seat at home, God bless you. it is somebody else that yeah. is saying, mm. I That's still sit government. at home and mm. they did not have their way. Mm. Not to sit at And the governor could not do For Monday. So we already have, have it in every, every area, absolutely. every region. Mm. These few pe uh, peaceful areas that we don't have it supposedly, that are where the people are still unaware of all of this, they will go there, at attack them, kidnap for ransom. And government in the today's report, if you recall, said that they have the list of the sponsors, but they are yet to disclose. They've had this since before Dubai... Yeah, published and prosecuted and prosecute, exactly. financiers of uh, uh, terrorism in Nigeria. They've had it. They've been saying that they will soon name names. And they will soon, Lashiwa. That's why I, mean, I don't bother reading such headlines anymore. We they were saying that he has widowed some people. Is it, was he convicted by law? Do, do we know for a fact? Or is it still just the like, community just that, oh, no, this no, man no, has killed like Lagbaja? Uh, that's, um, what's it? Um, the protest, the protest, the protest, yeah. They, they, act, they take responsibility for the, for the disasters they cause now. Mm. When they go in to terrorize, they put their names to it, and then we know them, but we will not go and pick them. That's why they are feared. Their names mm. go ahead of them. Exactly. There's a human interest story in the nation today. It's a police in Ocean State. Uh, launched a manhunt for a woman who was set to have set her husband ablaze. Uh, the suspect, Ife Olua Akanji, reportedly set her husband or boyfriend, Bolu Bamidele, on fire over alleged infidelity. So what happened was um, they got into a marriage engagement in the month of March, and then he had to relocate to Cairo, Egypt. So he's, he had to send her money. They built a bungalow, and then he came back a few weeks ago for, to celebrate her birthday. Then the lady realized that uh, he had impregnated somebody else, I think through phone conversations and all that, and she got really upset. They tried to solve the issue, talked about it for over a week. It didn't work. And then this particular day he was inside, she came out, set the house ablaze, locked all the doors, all the windows, and disappeared. Mm -hmm. So neighbors, it had to take them about 40 minutes to you know, break the windows to get into the apartment. They were using sand and water. At the end of the day, this man died. Uh, they took in him hospital. to the hospital, yes, and he had you know, he lost his the life. The woman eventually took kill themselves, allegedly yes. killed herself. Because yeah. the they said they still the man. Okay, they said they still the man. Okay. Yeah. So the part of the report is that they eventually they she ran away, happened. but they're suspecting suicide because of oh. the way she died. Mm. Now on the phone with us is the PRO, the MEC of Palola. Thank you for joining us, madam. Thank you for having me this morning. So we took the story in the papers this morning, and it was quite alarming to find out that even the woman who allegedly killed this man. Um, 
had, had also died. Could you confirm this story for us, please, and tell us exactly what happened from your reports? Uh, 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 we have not been able to establish that. Okay. It's, it's a rumor, yes. Okay. But we are still looking for her. Oh. Even this morning, we have decided to so we have decided to declare one thing. Uh, because the situation is that uh, the story behind it is that immediately the parents, the parents that followed them to the hospital, you see it in Nibada, where the man later died. Immediately they heard that the man died. They ran away. They were nowhere to be found. Even up to the time I'm talking now, in their house that is... Uh, that is at that village where they live. There is nobody there at that house till now. Mm -hmm. How did you f discover this this incident? What happened? Who came to you? Who alerted you? And how did you come about this story? I think it was a neighbor. It was a neighbor that came to the police station at Iboku because the place is under Iboku jurisdiction. So the first now came to the police station to report that a woman not her husband inside and, and set him ablaze. So when the police went there, but before we got to the place, the man has already been born mm -hmm. to, a, to, a, to a point that it was so ter terrible. So the woman was taken to the hospital. No hospital in Osobo that is called uh, Osobo Central Hospital. But when the people there knew that they cannot handle the matter, they transferred the the the, the, the make a reservoir of that person, the the man. The man's name is Bodu Bamidele. They referred him to UK in Ibadan. We are he later died the second day. By four o'clock on, on the eighteenth, because the incident happened on the seventeenth of this month. Did the man the victim before he passed on was able to confirm yes. indeed that it was his wife that that um, set the house ablaze? Yes. It was, it was the junior sister of the wife. The junior sister of the wife, according to the information, the junior sister of the wife was the one that called the, the parents of the deceased. Okay. That, uh, that uh, come and see, my sister has, has set a blade uh, in her husband, though, and she's running away. She has, she has run away. Oh, please come here quickly. All right. And Thank they said they got married about one year, one year ago. Mm. Prime of passion. That's what it's looking like right now. What are your thoughts on this? What is that thing? Should we begin to re-educate people? No matter what happens, you need to be able to hold yourself. How do you um, employ emotional intelligence in times like this? Mm. What do you think? How do you control like yourself? Crime of passion in Nigeria. Don't go and go and be Okay, crime, okay. Ah, now, there's, there's, people. there's no yeah. such thing. Okay, yeah. please tell us. Somebody, somebody yeah. 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 For life. Okay. Wow. In the list, in the not hang you. I don't get it. I just don't get it. Let's tell the... Experts talk about all this emotional intelligence, but if you not work, go. Oh, mm. Life no end. Yeah, but if you sacrifice a lot and you invested a lot, because so for you to your mother sacrificed a lot, you left her to marry somebody else. Exactly. What kind of sacrifice can you sacrifice for somebody mm. that is not enough for you to walk away from? Yeah, so mm. I don't get it. The too. problem I see ah. is um, we put our happiness uh, in the lives of, like, we hand over our happiness. We hand over what makes us feel good about ourselves to somebody else. So it, within another person's control. Mm. So you're doing what you're doing because of what you are expecting from this person. Mm. And when that expectation does not happen, some of us have not learned the art of accepting it and moving on. If we're in a loving relationship, I will love you. And if it goes anyhow, I will adjust myself work on myself, and I would move on. I will release you. I will allow you go free. True love is setting free, not even holding back. And I know how it is for young love. You said you're married one year. With women, they go into this. This is her Prince Charming. With all this expectation of Prince Charming to come and solve all her life's problems. For people who have been in marriages longer, will yeah. tell you that after a while, the scale starts <laughs> dropping off your eyes. You're not realizing, hmm, he's not all that. Yeah. But OK, then you start getting to the point you'll be annoyed about the weaknesses, then you start get to reaching a point where, okay, you now appreciate the strength and then you try and compromise, you know. So that is a journey and a process through marriage. But unfortunately, they have trunk she's truncated her own yeah. in the first year of marriage, the process of getting to understand that a mind is not completely there. Her is that she allowed her emotions to get the best of her. And now 
it's either she's committed suicide or, you know, she's on the run forever. Let's just even assume that he came and said, okay, I had a secret marriage before I married you, and I have four children. Hmm. And I want to go back to my first wife. Ooh. Is it fire that we get you just, I don't get it. I don't understand it. Is it that you are... The least informed person knows that the consequence for that kind of reaction is possible murder. You must have that uh, foresight to think that if I put someone on fire, he might just might not make it. If I send him in, and if he dies, <laughs> I just might just die as well. Mm -hmm. At least that's a common sense thing. You're not thinking rationally. Exactly. Why will you not be rational? rational? If you're not a rational, rational person, not why are you in a relationship? No, no it happens. Okay. Wait, you see this thing? Uh, it's, okay. it's moving. No, it's not moving. No, no, no. <laughs> because we think that uh, when we are in love, it's the way it's used to do it, giz giz in the movies. That's, that's how it has I to be in real, life. in real life at all. That's not how it happens in real at life. All. In real People life, you might still even cook food for the person that is provoking you in the Yes, marriage. now. And we you do. cook food for his children. We and you will eat and you will sleep and you wake up and, and you are still upset. Happen. Heaven what will not it? fall. Yes, everyone will not fall. Okay. And, and you show up at a family <laughs> event, and, and the person that is married to you is offend, annoying, is provoking you, and you smile at the family, and you greet all your in-laws, and you'll be happy. And you I go home, and remember you still your okay. Thanks for staying with us. Following the continued activities of terrorists in Nigeria, the federal government is considering a ban on the use of motorcycles, commercial motorcycles, are known as Okada, um, and even mining activities in the country. The Attorney General of, of the Federation AGF, Minister of Justice Abubakar Kamalami, said the measure would cut off funding of terrorists and bandits in Nigeria. What are your thoughts? So Nigerians are asking the federal government to take drastic actions, you know, because you keep doing the same thing, expecting a different result. It's insanity, they say. So the, the federal government is introducing new measures, one of which is let's ban this thing called Okada. Mm -hmm. Because many of these funders, many of these um, ransom takers, all these kidnappers, this is what they're using these monies for, buying Okada's, shipping them in. And cutting that source might help reduce terrorism. What are your thoughts on this? Do you agree or do you think it's too drastic a measure, considering the fact that there are many people who are poor and this is still a necessary commodity for Nigerians using um, uh, for, to get around? Yes, um, so yes. um, Nigerians had other jobs that they were doing to earn a living before the influx of Okada. And we don't have a problem with Okada because Okada has come to, you know, alleviate the stress of um, uh, okay. trekking for most people, especially in those areas where uh, there are no good roads, the taxi cabs are not able to enter, the buses are not able to enter those very uh, interlands, you know. So the bike, bikes, we've used them as, you know, a way to make life easy for the average Nigerian. And I understand that it's difficult to let go of what you're used to, you know, and that's why a lot of people are clamoring, no, don't stop the bikes. But look around us, look around the environment. You notice that the bike men have changed. The bike men were not, are not the bike men we used to have back in the days. You would take a bike now, you will speak your language to the bike man, you, will, you, you know the, where they lived, you, know, you knew them as part of you, elderly society. men, as part of society, elderly men who just wanted to do something to earn a living, you knew them. That's not the kind of bike men we have now. We have, if you ask me, strangers. almost strangers who sometimes do not even speak your language in the whole country. Mm. They are total strangers. The recklessness of these bikes because they do not even understand the traffic rules. Mm. The other time I was driving, I was trafficating, I saw this bike man, before I realized what was happening, the way he ran into my car and broke his leg. Mm. And before I could say Jack, my, my, my vehicle was gathered. They were over 40. Mm. It was the police that saved me. Mm. The police just said, let's go to the station, madam. You are, I'm so happy that we saw you immediately. They would have dealt with me. He, slammed into me and broke his own leg. I paid, though. I paid for his treatment. That's how the bike industry that was supposed to be a way of, you know, some of the men that were driving the bikes before were people who had left their jobs, some had retired, just something small to just drive around and come back. That's not what we have now. Mm. That's one. The insecurity. These men are using it as a front for the criminalities that happen. Come to places like Lekki, you are walking, your bag is snatched from uh, 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 bike men. They snatch your bag, they, do, they commit all sorts of atrocities. 
They hide, we see in the papers, they hide um, ammunition in their bikes. So if the government wants to fight insecurity, this is a step in the right direction. They are saying, how do we cut off these people so that we are doing it holistically? Right. So why we are trying to find a way to go into the bushes and raid them, which they have not started, and I have a problem with them not starting, <laughs> even after the Tucano jets and everything. I want to see more of that. Let us also find a way mm. to cut them down from right. a lot of people coming in from different countries to come and ride back right. here. Men used to go into the farms those days, and I understand that insecurity is stopping them from doing that, but there are other jobs they can do. They can learn carpentry. They can learn, right. uh, 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 what's this, uh, all these menial yeah, jobs yeah. that they can do. Plumbing. Plumbing. All right, let me come to talk with you because what, um, she said something which was interesting. I mean, that many of these bike riders are strangers. Interestingly, I've been living in my house right now for over 10 years, and I didn't realize that my security guard, who I thought was from... Uh, I thought he was from somewhere in the north. I just found out two weeks ago he's from Ivory Coast. Mm -hmm. I, never, I, I never knew he was from Ivory Coast. I, the, the, I thought he was speaking Hausa. I mean, I just used to think, I, I don't speak Hausa. But I thought he was Hausa. Wow. Was just two weeks ago. And I said, I speak, and I'm, I'm from Cote d'Ivoire. I'm like, what? What? What are you doing here? <laughs> like, I mean, so, you just, they're strangers. Strangers. He's been living in my house. And I thought he was Nigerian. I can't ask him, you know, abroad, if you have some phone with you, you're thinking, mm. how did you get in? Mm. Your passport, are you, do you have your stage? Yeah, do you have your I never want to ask this one. How did you enter? What did you They just throw it into the country. They just throw it into the country and they're here living. Yes. What so yes. are your thoughts on this? So, um, that side is very worrisome. The fact that um, it's not just, you see, we need to start dealing with Okada challenge for the other crime part of it. It's not just the fact that they, they steal. Or the human trafficking part of it. The same way we bring in house girls from some country, oh, they, I mean, from Plato or from um, Niger State or somebody from Calabar or from, mm. from Kutonu. That is how they bring in Okada riders. So the people that have money will buy like 20 bikes. And then they will not go and recruit, not proper like recruitment. They bring people like their house boys and bring them in. They ride the bike, come back and just sleep. Not like you, they don't, there's no house, there's nothing. They, they just sleep on the bike. They just sleep, they just sleep in a place provided for them. Everybody just sleeps together. The next day, jump on the bike again and starts and going out. around. So it is, it's a, there's an industry around it. Now, um, we are facing a very, it's a, we're in a guerrilla warfare. It's not, that you cannot fight. This is not conventional. You don't know your enemy. Mm. You are fighting an unconventional warfare. You must start thinking unconventionally. You must start approaching it in an unconventional way. So how am I going to deal with this crisis? There are countries in this world that they didn't used to have um, firing squad for corruption. Countries had to put in policies. Yes. If you are caught as a corrupt person, we will kill you, we will kill your wife. Both, your, both of you will die. Because they were going to deal with a specific Issue. problem mm. that they knew ordinary I cannot solve this problem. Mm. So we are dealing with corruption. We are dealing with robbery. We are dealing with kidnapping. We are dealing with banditry. We, we are dealing with people saying 40 bikes came in. Yeah. In flux. Oh, well, and they were 100. all carrying... Uh -uh. 100 bikes came in. All of them carrying AK-47. Mm -mm. That is how we are dealing with. People can escape when you, you are still trying to put load diesel into your truck at the, at the police station because they are rationing diesel. Okada has come in, kidnapped, gone I'm out. Gone. So what we're dealing with requires a different approach. And it is going to be extremely uncomfortable for everyone dealing we with the issue. Yeah. Now, the challenge for Nigerians are, when we hear any government policy, we believe, we, since we don't trust our government, we don't believe in the sincerity of ability to um, enforce it long term. Through, yeah. Following through with that policy. So it sounds nice. I, I'm liking the sound bites I'm hearing. But I'm wondering, can they do this? Would they do it before elections? Because they know that it can affect the election. Yeah. Would they be willing to... Would, would, they, yeah, would they follow the through election. or would they do it for like a week or two and then they'll say relax. before election, they will relax? Let me hear Nima's thoughts on this. What do you think? Because I, I hear those arguments and I also rem remember that there are people who genuinely do this business. There's no other way. They do this, this is their only source of livelihood. So do you think it's fair to do a total ban or to find some kind of other way to solve this problem? Well, like I said during the news before, it's a solution that they're looking at. So it's a welcome one. And I think that they're not even looking at us in, in the cities when they're talking about this. They're looking at the interiors, the northern, the villages, like the turbanin of that uh, Fulani Seriki. They came in bikes, you know, and so they know what they're looking at. They're looking at cutting off sources of, um, of funding for terrorism. 
They're looking at suspending mining. These are things that happen in those areas where we have major insecurity. Yeah, yeah. Before we reach here, <laughs> where they are talking, we are not, they are not talking about us here and the level of bike man abuses that we have here. They're talking about those areas. And so for me, in those areas, before it now became a mode, the, the kidnap of the Dapchi girls, the, the terrorists arrived on their bikes. Yes. Yeah. They came in like 400 bikes hmm. to one area. That didn't used to be how bike men rode bikes. Everybody did not have a bike. So you could trek. I, when, I, when I served, I was posted to um, Kogi State, Kaba. And sometimes when I was leaving camp, you could trek, trek, trek for hours to get to the, to the park. And I was almost trekking for that long until I saw somebody returning from the farm with his farm product and a bike. That's the level of biking that, you they know, had, they had. So I'm saying they must use sense to do it. For some people in those interiors, that is how they, how they bring the back, place. go to farm and bring back farm products. So when we are saying total ban, are we creating alternatives? Are we saying this is how you will now transfer farm products? In the olden days, my grandfather had a Land Rover. Everybody would rent it. They would go and go to their farms to clear things. Are you looking at easing people's lives or... Are we yeah. saying total hardship to everybody while we in the cities who are making the policies are riding cars and we're not farmers? So I don't want us to, to do it from a selfish point of view, but it's a need, just as Missy said, that we must do because they said we don't want to fight the insecurity. We are not ready, but let's, let's be uh, um, complex in our thinking. Let's think it through and find alternatives. Let's